my name is Sherry Stark, and I'm a member of Elders Climate Action, a national group of elders working for a better future for our grandchildren. One very simple thing I'm doing to try to help reverse the growing trend of climate disasters is I'm drastically cutting down on my meat consumption, especially beef. Raising cows for consumption is an extremely inefficient use of our dwindling resources. To produce one pound of beef, it takes about 1,800 gallons of water, nine times the amount of water it takes to produce soybeans, 18 times the amount it takes to produce corn. As this chart shows, the positive impact we'd see from eliminating beef from our diets is huge. Chicken, pork, eggs, and dairy are all so much better for the environment than beef. It's the cows that are the pollution hogs here. Plus, they emit a crazy amount of methane in their farts and burps, which always makes me laugh to imagine, but it's really serious stuff, evidently. When I found this out, I decided to see if I could shift my taste buds gradually, try to be more creative in my cooking, maybe, and see if my family and I would be okay with eating less beef. I started taking baby steps toward becoming a semi-vegetarian. I knew this couldn't be an all-or-nothing proposition or we wouldn't stick with it. I still have beef once in a while, my special filet mignon at the fancy steakhouse, my chili dog on the rare occasion we drive by our favorite hot dog stand and there isn't a line. But at home, I've started to make a wider variety of chicken dishes, chicken parmesan, chicken fajitas, serving fish more, having more beans and lentils, more whole grains like quinoa and couscous. For the dishes that I used to use beef for, my chili, meatloaf, and meatballs, I started substituting healthier ground meats like chicken and turkey. All the same seasonings and sauces, so they taste pretty much the same. Nobody at my house has seemed to even notice the switch. My next step was to start experimenting with the various plant proteins on the market, like soy sausage and beyond beef. I especially like tofu, a staple in Asian kitchens for millennia, because it comes in so many different textures. The firm version is my favorite because it fries up kind of crispy, chewy like sausage and absorbs whatever sauce you cook it in. These various meat substitutes are tasty enough on their own, but most of the time I just use them to stretch out my meat or egg dishes, adding them in a supporting role, so to speak. I also add onions, garlic, mushrooms, and peppers, so by the time I'm done, the dish is really only half meat, but totally savory and infused with meaty flavors and the spicier the better for us. I can never really go wrong when I add more spices. The biggest step in my cooking transformation though has been simply focusing on the amazing variety and flavor of good produce. I've become something of a vegetable groupie, seeking out local farmers markets, seeing what the sellers have that they're proud of week to week. The difference between fresh off the vine, perfectly ripe peak produce and blando frozen or canned vegetables is truly astounding. I love trying new types of vegetables and Googling all the various ways to cook them. I recently discovered bok choy cabbage at my daughter's suggestion actually because she loves Asian food and I sauteed it in some sesame oil and Chinese chili paste, added eggplants, scallions, peanuts and mushrooms and had a truly exotic meal. Experimenting inspires me to keep it fun. Variety is the spice not only of life but of cooking. I also have been inspired by a trendy California restaurant chain called Lemonade, which has a kind of fusion style of combining unexpected flavors and textures. It's one of our favorite restaurants because of that element of surprise, asking ourselves, what are the new combination of vegetables they're going to have for us today? Will we go with our favorites or try that new one with the fava beans? One of my favorites there is a charred broccoli salad with ricotta cheese. Another is avocado, cherry tomato, and pine nuts. Another favorite is roasted curried cauliflower with raisins and toasted almonds. The thing that inspired me most about lemonade salads is their roasted in oil, melt in your mouth vegetables. So throughout the week, I prepare a rotating assortment of them at home. Carrots, beets, turnips, Brussels sprouts, pre-cooked and ready to be tossed into salads or used in omelets or rice bowls. I also splurge on gourmet extras to keep my salads exciting. Fancy olives, sun-dried tomatoes, artichoke hearts, crunchy jicama flavored vinegars and oils, hummus spreads and tahini, garbanzo beans. Am I making you hungry here? As you can maybe tell, I'm eating less meat, but I'm not really missing it. I'm saving money because most of these other foods are less expensive than meat. And last but not least, all of this is very good for my and my family's health. Plant-based eaters are much less likely to develop a variety of illnesses, much less likely to be overweight, and we tend to have more pep and energy. Plus, we'll most likely live longer. 
by an average of six to nine years. Just imagine those extra years of fun. I'm pretty sure I'm never going to go cold turkey, or maybe I should say cold pastrami, as it's beef we're mostly talking about. I'll most probably still splurge on the occasional steak, but considering their cost to my and my children's future, it's going to be less and less. I'm happy to be an evolving semi-vegetarian, and I'm happy to have found a way to help the planet that I can not only afford, but I actually enjoy with gusto and a fruit salad on the side. And I'm really not going to miss those cow farts. Thank you, and please, if you're interested in hearing other ways we can hopefully solve our climate crisis, join me and my fellow elders at one of our regular Zoom meetings. The national site is at eldersclimateaction.org, and there are dozens of projects our members are taking on, from letter writing to our representatives in support of environmental legislation, to preparing for natural disasters like wildfires and hurricanes. That same site also has links to local Elders Climate Action chapters for projects targeted specifically to your region. Check us out, come to a meeting, or just browse around our website for ideas. Thanks.